So how are we doing now? This is on mic one, levels seem okay. So as I was just saying, almost messed up, didn't have the cameras on because I was messing with something else as the uh, timer was counting down. And let's see, that looked good. And uh, almost didn't have, didn't have the audio on. So uh, looks like we're live. So I just sat down, been tying for a few hours this evening, uh, not doing anything special, uh, just like typical at this time of year. Um, I'm tying just specifically to fill uh, inventory boxes. Um, I'm kind of doing some of the same heads that I have been. Um, I'm still tying 5 8 Barumbas. I got that, that many more brown to do. Um, and then when that's done, I got that many black to do. Um, and then I think that'll be done for filling the inventory with that size head. Uh, and then I'll be moving on to, um, I think, flatheads. Because uh, those, those are pretty important, too. Um, the guys that are fishing the rivers, the guys that are uh, fishing deeper water throughout the year, they're stocking up on those. So let's get things switched around here. So I will do this. So we got our vice on the screen. And uh, we got that all set up. Let's just put a jig in the vise to see how we look. <coughs> the uh, marks I had set up on my ducks are a little off. Um, I put down a new uh, white sheet. Uh, that I that I typically use on my desk and taped down a fresh one cleaned everything up even got out the the uh, dust buster and sucked up all the hair and dust and everything else that's on the on the tabletop so but like I said uh, today uh, nothing special colors um, that you might have seen me tie before um, right now I'm just doing uh, Let's see, natural white with uh, natural brown uh, on a brown head. With these, I'm using a uh, brown thread, but it's the same thread that I typically use. It's the um, Good Rod Size A Rod Wrapping Thread. It's just a plain nylon thread, round nylon. And I locked those threads on about a third of the way down the shank of the hook. And then as you can see, this is an old um, used up white tail that I saved because that brown back is still a nice usable length. It's a nice tail. And I like using uh, natural brown. Uh, as opposed to dyed, dyed brown sometimes just because of the it being natural really so just like always I cut my pinch and then I pull the fibers out of the butt ends and then I switch my grip just so I can restack some of those longer hairs And I pull out some of the ones that I don't like the way they look. And with this jig, the length of the tail will be the length of the body past the bend of the hook, which is right to the end of this silver part on my vice jaws. Just double checking, making sure we got some good audio. If things don't quite sound right, go ahead and uh, you know just let me know. 
lock this on with two or three wraps towards the bend of the hook, two or three wraps towards the head, and I give that a twist. This is another tail, natural white. And this tail, the uh, length of the hairs are are nice. It's a nice tail, but it's weird. They have these medium size pieces in there. So even though my pinch just now felt like it was going to be pretty thick, once I pulled out those two big clumps, now it feels about the amount that I do want to put on the, on the jig itself. And that could just be due to the time of year that the deer was shot or harvested. And again, I just I can adjust my pinch until I get the length I want. Getting texts here from my daughter's boyfriend. He's a good fisherman and a rod builder, and I had uh, sent him a couple questions about the rod wrapping threads and some of the some of the uh, epoxies and lacquers and whatnot, things like that that they use um, in rod building. Sent that about a half hour ago. I'm surprised it took him so long to get back to me. So. I'm joking if he ever watches this. So. There's that jig right here. Very nice, just a natural brown. I'm not worried. You can see this pinch of white has a little bit of brown in it. And uh, like I've discussed before, I'm okay with that. I think that looks more natural. Um, and sometimes being a little bit different is, you know, that could be just a small thing that's really getting the, the fish to strike uh, on a jig like that compared to a jig of the exact same color, just that they're strictly brown and white. Um, because I'm doing a few dozen of these, I'm just putting them on my spinning rack and then after I tie them all, I'll go back with the lacquer-based head cement uh, to get all those collars. So again, I'm just locking on the nylon with open wraps. And then when I walk the wraps back down to the head of the jig, uh, the wraps will crisscross and uh, really lock, lock that thread on well. This brown tail, I don't know if you can see it. There's a few white strands in this pinch, two or three at least. Sometimes I'll pull them out if they're just right there on the outside, but if they're in the middle of the pinch, I'll leave them. And again, I'm just measuring to the end of the silver part here. And if I need to make it a little bit longer I can adjust my pinch or I can roll my fingers slightly opening this up just a little bit so when I switch my grips I've uh, taken up the that amount of space um, subsequently if it was a little too long I could pinch a little bit more which pulls the thread pulls the uh, the hair in so then it's the length that I want and I can just pinch and I know that 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 is what we're looking for so you see how those hairs extend right to the end there nicely
take my pinch. During the week I've been tying and painting almost every night and I just finished painting up a bunch of bass jigs, uh, mostly archie heads. Uh, there's a couple other uh, bass type jigs uh, mixed in there as well, um, some football heads, um, but mostly the archie style. And uh, I'm working on a project with another YouTuber uh, who does a, a bass, uh, his channel is specifically bass fishing. Uh, and he had contacted me after the um, collaboration I did with uh, Chris at uh, Retro Bassin. And uh, this was months and months ago, probably six, seven months ago. And, you know, I, I'm always up for doing things like that and uh, hadn't heard from him. Um, but then just a week or so ago, contacted me and I guess he's finished the projects that he had been working on. And now he's getting ready for that one. So I've painted up those heads and over the next week or so, I'll do a video or two um, tying up the bass jigs. Um, going to do a, a few very similar, um, the old, you know, 70s and 80s style bucktail bass jig. Just plain colors, nothing fancy. Might do a few with uh, tinsel. I do want to do one, uh, this color here, this is a jig, um, one of my videos, I think it was with the, when I first got the kayak, the, the native, and uh, it was uh, the bass I caught, I think it was the native voyage uh, with the native. If I find that information, I'll add it into this video. Um, once we're done with the live version and maybe I can edit that and I can throw in that link. Um, but this is the jig that I caught that bass on, um, on that video. Real popular color. I use it in the Susquehanna River when I'm just fishing from shore, you know, just wasting an hour or two. Um, smallmouth bass love this color. It's, uh, an olive head. Uh, brown or black head work just as well. It's got that red color uh, collar and it has uh, an olive back and a white belly. Those are both bucktail. And then it's got a very small thin strip of black right down the middle. And then uh, some crystal flash few uh, I think it's the pearl on each side you see if I can put it in here and what happens if I flip this around it'll be out of the shot so but it's a it's a real pretty jig works real well uh, this is a one uh, eighth this one here uh, but uh, size uh, one quarter usually is a uh, what I like fishing with it. It's heavy enough to, um, there's a big drop off uh, at, at that, um, on the video where it was the uh, maiden voyage of the uh, native kayak. There's a big drop off where I was fishing there. So it goes from a pretty wide ledge, about six foot, and then it'll drop down to about 12. And uh, I was actually fishing for walleye. I was, I was really looking for the walleye that, that we really target in that section of that lake. And uh, 
yeah, the small mouth just hit it when it was still on that ledge, the shallower part. And uh, I think I only had maybe six pound test. It, it wasn't the rod I was expecting to catch the fish on. But uh, yeah, it's a nice video. If I can get the link, I'll make sure I include it. So this pinch has a little bit of white. I'm making sure that I pull out some of those white fibers just because it's, they're not one or two lone pieces. It's three or four that are together. So I'm taking out most of them. But since this is a natural brown, I don't mind I don't mind it having a little bit of the brown itself has a lot of variation um, between dark brown, light brown, um, usually a gray or black speckle if you really take a close look at the, the hairs themselves. Um, so if there's a piece or two of white in there, uh, I'm not going to get too bent out of shape over that. Oops, I hit the camera. Just to speed things up, I try to, when I'm tying, I try to tie a lot, uh, everything that I'm tying, I try to make them all the same color or, or similar colors so I'm not, you know, switching, swapping out tails or getting up from my desk to go find the other color, colors that I need or different color thread. So I've been doing a lot of browns brown and white, brown and purple, brown and olive. Um, last weekend about this time I was finishing up the olives for the most part and I, I believe after I got done um, with the last live show I was doing a solid olive on the last one uh, I actually finished up a bunch of uh, olive and natural browns. How's that? So just to speed things up, uh, earlier this week this bag this bag was completely full. Uh, probably how many dozen I typically stuff in there is uh, three. Six, seven, twenty-one, about forty-five dozen-ish, give or take. But if I do three sides of my big spinning rack that I have on my paint table, that works out to twenty-one dozen painted jigs on three levels. It's a four-level spinning rack but I usually use just the three because it's easier to reach. So that's a minimum of 21 dozen. And I know I painted brown heads twice last week and the week before, so. Starting to get warmer, so I will pu will pull the uh, airbrush out. Really want to play with some of those uh, painting painting heads with the airbrush. I have a bag on one of my tables. I just had it. This is a hit. Uh, this is a head that I did years ago, and I would 
had had a couple guys that asked for them specifically so it was more of a custom type thing um, but I want to do this more and have them uh, as part of the inventory so you know things things like a, a black head black uh, black and white head do brown and white head I can uh, maybe do two-tone um, with metallics because those are pretty easy to um, airbrush the colors I got are, are great um, I'm using uh, airbrush paint that uh, is used for uh, automotive uh, touch-ups and can be used on all different types of material but the metal really is what I was interested in when I first learned of this company and then if you watch some of the guys that do the wooden plugs and the lures like that the uh, clear coats and whatnot that they're that they use all super durable UV protecting so I'm I'm not gonna go a hundred percent into you know just spraying my jig heads um, I do like the old school look in the way that I do them um, I'm totally aware of newer techniques and the way things have changed over the years um, and I'm you know I know that my jigs as I you know I'm, I'm painting them with epoxy that's really an old way of doing it it's not a bad way. Epoxy paint's really good, durable paint. Uh, it's the, the difference with powder paints now, though. You still get you get super durability, um, but the neat thing with if you're starting from scratch and you're doing things with powder, you know those fancy color combinations and metallics and things like that that you can do. So I also have come across some uh, real good metallic epoxies which I'll also start using. Here's some heads. This is a um, brushed uh, silver, brushed aluminum I guess is what the um, paint color is. But it has a it has a nice sparkle to it. Um, and but this is just a straight epoxy. So there's some golds, uh, silver, aluminum. Let's see here's another one. Just a darker, darker bucktail. So maybe you can see the head head color. So I have been playing with things recently, just trying out some new things. Um, though I'm not, I'm not looking to change things dramatically. I have so much uh, epoxy paint. I have gallons of epoxy paint. I have a lifetime <laughs> of epoxy paint. So I'm not switching over anytime soon. I have too much invested in it. So right then, what I just did is is I just tore away this the bottom piece of this tail, just so it's easier easier for me to hold it in my fingers and just get the pinch that I need. I have a table here in the center of this room that I paint most of the jigs at, 90% of them. And the garbage is actually underneath that table, so that's I can just reach behind me and throw it. I usually make it. So I lock this on a few wraps towards the bend of the hook, a few wraps back. Give my bucktail a twist. Put that darker color 
on what will be the back of the jig when it's fished. You can see that this pinch has a little bit of brown in it. Not a problem. It's still mostly white. And you might have noticed right there, I did not switch my grips back and forth, measuring out that white tail. And I held it up and, and looked at it, and I just knew, like I saw that, oh, it needs to be shortened just a smidge. When I, when I took my pinch, I just pinched it uh, with that in mind. Um, I guess you do this enough that you know you'll you'll have that muscle memory, you'll have that calibrated eyeball, however you want to describe it. And after I finish this collar, I'll show you the tail and how how it how it's equal. How's that look? Alright. Same length. Forgot to check the clock when we started. And we were lucky that I had the camera on and the microphones going. Uh, I think we started about 40 minutes ago, give or take. playing in front of me. I'm just keeping an eye on chats or viewers. There is a bit of a delay, so if anybody asked a question, I might not notice it right away. I am building this plane while I fly it, so I don't have anybody giving me the heads up with questions or there's nobody controlling any of the equipment. I've tried to whittle everything down so I can just control everything here with one hand. like to, before I forget, uh, remind everybody to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, definitely add some comments down below. Um, type of jigs that you're tying this time of year. Uh, what you're going to be using opening day. We have uh, May 1st is going to be walleye season this year. So that's a nice nice change and then locally a lot of the lakes locally they've uh, relaxed some of the limits things have been so healthy over the past so many years you know it's 
it's nice to see. Of course, subscribe so you don't miss any new content, especially, you know, when we go live, you'll uh, get that notification right away. And by all means, share, you know, if you know you got a fishing buddy and you think he needs to see the, the channel, go ahead and share that information. Send the link. Those are some of the things that I don't have completed yet in terms of production. And that is, you know, those uh, bugs or crawlers that you see across the bottom of the screen, you know, that tell you to subscribe. Or Some of them I think are a little corny. Like, you're not going to see a little mini-me popping up and telling you to subscribe or hit that bell. or Those are kind of corny. But I should have a button I can push. But if it gets to that uh, level, I might as well have somebody in here running the board and just let the talent be the talent, right? So, so for this collar, I walk the thread up to the head, and then I can walk a few wraps back towards the bend, and then a few wraps back to the head of the jig. And this collar has a real nice taper to it, nicely comb-shaped. I'll spin this around so you can see it. Actually, looks real pretty. Get a good view of that. Nice collar, nice and short, not too long, and then it has a nice cone shape to it. Oop. How'd we do? It's a nice jig. Recently uh, posted a video tying a bucktail streamer, Susquehanna streamer, what we call it here locally. And uh, it's really, really fun to tie. Uh, I enjoy fishing those. One thing that was fun is I was able to get out my other vise um, and just use equipment that's a little bit different. Um, sometimes it is nice to use nice new modern equipment. But eventually I will have the same camera and lighting set up, just mirror image at my other bench here. I have an identical tying bench, uh, just like this one. It's an old IBM factory uh, factory workbench. Uh, that one's real nice. It's got uh, two banks of drawers, one on each side, four drawers on each side with your space to sit in the middle. This one that I'm sitting at here is just a typical workbench that just has the that shelf that you put your feet on. So under this bench, I the only thing I have is there's a paper bag that is filled with the brown pieces that are left over from the white tails. Um, so this this type of this type of scrap is in there. But I save all those 
pieces and then there's a box that is probably I don't know 16 by 16 square 20 20 by 20 square and I have four plastic bags white purple brown and black those are the colors I use most so I keep them handy so in the middle of an afternoon and I've been tying most of the morning and I need more black I can just reach down and grab it most of the other colors sit in those cabinets in the way back behind me I have two big file cabinets and they're just every drawer is full with uh, big plastic bags of uh, bucktail so whatever color you know, yellow orange blues all the different colors that I use I keep my feathers in a separate area and the feathers are a little bit different and I kind of store them not just separated by color but also separated by um, uh, price and quality so I have you know really fancy fly tying dry hackle dry fly hackle things like that that have that are stored nice and flat and in individual plastic bags and whatnot and then I have just typical you know bags of marabou kids kind of make fun of me because this part of the house smells like mothballs to me it just reminds me of my dad's house it's the uh, the smell the the fly tying room that I grew up knowing about oops so here's it here's something interesting I cut my pinch but I didn't put the thread on so I haven't measured this out yet so I can just hold this pinch tight take my thread a couple wraps around my finger so I can hold it with some tension and I can lock it on like normal So now I can measure my pinch, switch my grips, trim it, lock this on, two or three wraps towards the bend of the hook, two or three wraps back to the, towards the head of the hook. Give it a twist, put that darker color so it'll be on the back side of the jig when you're fishing it. Cut my pinch of my lighter color. Take the smaller pieces out the butt end. And restack just some of those longer pieces. Still want to want it to retain a little bit of natural look. Just trying to get most of the pieces about the same length. I can measure. Switch my grip. Keep this pinch tight. And again, locking it on just the same way. A couple wraps towards the bend of the hook, a couple wraps towards the head. I can finish this without letting go. Not letting go of this pinch as you tie will help keep this collar fairly small. I don't want it too long. Some tires really like having a nice long collar. Um, and it's kind of their style or trademark but I really try to go for a shorter collar with this loop of a different color I can walk the thread about halfway down walk it back up to the head of the jig take our tag in and put it through our loop Nice.
nice nice jig so there we go that's a nice natural brown and white bucktail on a brown head brown thread real pretty so I hope everybody uh, enjoyed uh, Oh, before I, well before I finish, if Darkman's still here, Darkman Fishing's asking uh, how does that jig head fall through the water compared to let's say a ball jig? It's similar. Uh, this Barumba head is uh, very close uh, to a typical walleye shaped jig, uh, walleye type head. Uh, Dua has a similar uh, some you know a couple different versions of a walleye head. Uh, and you'll see other other brands as well. It's um, fairly square, but it does have that wedge shape. Oh, hold on. There we go. So, does have that wedge shape. Uh, the uh, key thing with this is the balance. Um, I've had guys explain to me um, their take on it. Uh, a lot of times you'll cast a jig out and you see a helicopter away from you. Um, I don't think I've ever seen that with casting a Barumba. Personally, not that I've ever really tried to watch for that. Um, but that was this one fisherman's take on it. I was really surprised. He, he kind of caught me in a parking lot outside a shop one day um, and told me his story. But... Um, sinks very it's much similar to a ball head um or or any um walleye type wedge shape head fish is real nice um pulling it through the water um it uh doesn't it doesn't land hook up necessarily um it does fall point up so as you as you bounce it through as you're jigging it it does swim kind of at this slanted angle but when it when it lands it it, it doesn't stand up like uh, certain jig heads would um, in terms of getting stuck uh, I lose as many of these as I do ball heads I'll have to admit um, there's a couple sections that I fish uh, uh, spillway locally uh, that everybody will lose jigs um, you know every seven or eight casts I expect to lose a jig um, and the, when I'm fishing up there, I'm usually fishing flatheads, um, just to help me with that snag ratio. So, um, but yeah, very typical, um, walleye style jig. So it's a good jig, real popular here locally in central New York. I sell a crap ton of them. Um, and, uh, this is, it's an old family. Uh, this is what the, you know, my father started with way back in the day so but I do I do other heads I think I have some ball heads um, I have some ball heads in the bags over there I got some football heads here I gotta tie I gotta tie this many what I call a football head it's just a short shank teardrop style head um, and this is kind of a generic all around. I consider it kind of like the ball heads, a more generic shape um, because I'll tie jigs that guys are catching walleye, but then I've also tied patterns specifically for um, guys that were target, targeting bass. Uh, I, I don't get hung up personally uh, with fishing. Um, on which head I'm using. Um, to me, it's the weight and the color. But here's another example. Here's some a smaller football. Got to do a bunch of these as well. This is mostly a perch jig. Uh, that you know, I got to fill the boxes with um, calf tails. So, but that's great. Really, really good to see questions. Um, and before before I end, I'll just kind of remind everybody. I'm still I still haven't nailed down a specific night that I'm going to do this. Um, it's worked out okay. Uh, just turning things on when I'm 
doing stuff. Um, and I'll just tie whatever. The things that I talked about earlier with the um, bass jigs, uh, once I sit down with those heads, oops, hold on, forgive me. It's a one-man show. Once I sit down with those jigs, um, I'm going to film it and edit it properly, properly. It won't be a live show only because I don't want to show the exact same thing I did uh, for the uh, collaboration I did with Retro Bassing. Um, and there's some detailed things uh, that I want to show. There's, there's one bass um, style jig. It'll have a bucktail body, but I'm also going to use uh, some hackles to give it that um, crawfish-looking thing uh, look to it. And uh, going to try something a little bit different technique-wise, so it won't just be lashing the hairs on. Um, what else do we got going on? Gonna be, I definitely got some fly tying stuff I want to do, um, only because there's my personal box that I need to fill um, before the fishing season starts. So those are some things I want to do that won't necessarily be live. Uh, but then again, I, I still like turning the camera on, and if people want to listen to me babble, um, I'm willing to do it. So. I think that's it for tonight. We've tied just about an hour. We finished, uh, we have a dozen uh, new ones on the rack right now, so we must have tied at least that many. Um, I'll just remind everybody again, any questions or comments, put those down below in the comment section. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Um, by all means, share the videos. You know other people that want to look at them or forums that you, you belong to. Uh, share the videos, um, and I guess uh, like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, keep tying in tight lines. Wow, the video's way behind. <laughs>